Hi, Luke Fannin here, and we're going to run through this question, which is a commencement and cessation question. We are only going to do the commencement part of it, and uh, another time we'll look at the cessation. So, Jack Stapleton started in July 2009 and ceased trading, and then we were asked to calculate his profit for each of the years. So, we're going to look at uh, we're going to ignore the last two years which are to do with cessation and we're just going to look at the other years. So in all of these questions, particularly in commencement, it's very important that you look at the date of startup. So here, he started on the 1st of July 2009. That's the first year, that's year one. And then we have year 2, 2010, and year three, and they all follow on from there. So you start off your question and you always type in the years. That's the first thing I do. So I have the years here, year one, year two, year three, year four, because there are special rules for the first three years of a business, and year four then we're in the current year basis. So year one we said was 2009. Year two then is 10. And So there are four years of trading. So once again, he started in 2009, so 2009 is the first year, and then after that it just goes consecutively down. There's, there are rules for calculating the profits, the assessor profits for each of the years. So the rule for the first year of trading is that you use the actual basis. In the second year, you use the current year basis if you can. And third year, it's uh, current year basis, less relief for year two. And then f after year four, five, and six, you'll always be using the current year basis. So I'll just enter them in. So I've just entered them there. And what I mean by the current year basis is it's the normal way for continuing business. And so after your first three years of trading, the current year basis is used. So what I'm example is 2012. We come to our uh, question here. And the current year basis you look for 2012 here, is there one set of accounts in the year there is? And if, if it's for 12 months, it's for a year, you can use that as your basis. That'll be the assessable profits for 2012. So for 2012, one set of accounts, there for 12 months, 61,500. So that's the profit for the assessable profits for 2012. Same with 2013. There's one set of accounts in 2013 for a year or for 12 months so 53,700 is the assessable profits and it will be the same in 2014 except this is a bit different because he actually finishes up his business so we're not going to go there uh, we'll, there's uh, when you do cessation the special rule for the last year and also this penultimate year th the second last year gets re-looked at so but we're not going to do that and we can also do some of these now as well so year three which is 2011 it's current year basis less relief for year two so we can do part of year three so can we do the current year basis for year three we look here 2011 there's one set of accounts ending in 2011 there for a year yes we can 48,700 and we're, that's possibly going to be reduced by year two relief so that's something we'll have to work out the relief but that's a separate thing year two can we use the current year basis so year two is 2010 here is 2010 and there are two sets of accounts in 2010 so we can't use the current year basis you have to you can only use the current year basis if there's one set of accounts in the year and they're for a 12 month period or for a year so there's a special rule for that So this uh, won't apply. We'll have to change the current year. And year one is always the actual. And the actual just means from January to December in the tax year. So if we look at the question again. Year one is 2009. The pro actual profits in 2009. He started in July. 
and went as far as December. So we're just interested in his profits from July to December 2009. And then we have a period here ending 28th of February. So this period runs from July, 1st of July to the 28th of February. And then you need to work out how long a period that is. So if you do the working, it's eight months counted out. July is one month, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, and February. Eight months. And count it out in your fingers, if that helps. It always works for me. So that period is for eight months. So when I've got a period, I'm nearly right beside it, eight months, so, we, so I know, so I don't forget. Uh, so the profits are 34,900. We want the profits from 1st July to December, which is a six month period. So we, out of those eight months profits, we want six months. So you just do a simple working, six divided by eight, but divided by eight, multiplied by the profits. And the profits were 34,900. And that'll give you the actual profits in 2009. So we worked that out. And we get 26,175. And that's the answer for year one. That's not going to change the actual profits in the year. Year two, which is 2010, 10 should normally be on the current year basis, or would be on the current year basis, but we can't use it, as I said, because we have two accounting, two accounts periods ending in 2010. So there are rules for when that happens. And the rules are, if you can't use the current year basis, well, for example, here's the first rule, if you're continuing business or uh, or if you're meant to use the current year basis, there's one set of accounts ending in the year. That's what we do, we use the profits in those accounts. And that's what happened for 2011, 2012. We were able to use the current year basis because there was one set of accounts in the year and it was for a year. It was for a 12-month period. So for 2011, assessable profits using the current year basis were 48.7. And that's what we, we had. Now, in 2000. And 10, we can't do that because we've two sets of accounts. So then there's a rule for that. If we've two sets of accounts ending in a year, I have to put down 2015 here, but in a year, if possible, we go back 12 months from the latest account year end. So basically pick the latest account year end and s go back 12 months. If there are 12 months, that's grand. We can do that. They're working. We're going to do that. If there weren't 12 months to go back, then you come back to the fallback of you to work out the actual profits. But we'll uh, see here what we're going to do. So 2010, the latest period of the second account is 31st of August. Can we go back 12 months from there? So 12 months from the 31st of August would be, would be the 1st of September 2009. And we can go back 12 months because he started in July. So there, there's scope for us to go back. So all we do is a working and get, go back 12 months from this period. So we'll be taking all of this period and then some of this period uh, to work out the profits for 2010. So the period ending 31st of August, first of all, how long is that period? It goes from the 1st of March to 31st of August, once again counted out, March, April, May, June, July, August. That is a six month period. So I'll nearly write that down again. So I'm going to have to do a working. I'll go back to my Excel sheet. The current year basis can't be used for 2010. So font strike through. So that's gone. So we have to go back 12 months from August. So I'm going to do working for year two. So that's the latest accounting date, 2010. 
and it's given us a period there. It's for six months, so 47,200. We need to go back another six months. So I take a look at the other period, and out of this 34,900, I want six months of that. And I know that that's eight months, so I'll need six out of eight, so six eighths by 34,900, and that'll get me my. And I know I want to go back six months because I've already have six months here. So it's just six divided by eight by 34,900. And I get 26,175, and that then is the, I need to add the two of them up to get the, the assessable profits for the 12-month period ending 31st of August 2010. So that's what that's given me. That's 73,375 is the profits for the 12-month period ending 31st of August 2010, which is the rule when there's two accounts ending in the year, go to the latest date, and go back 12 months and get the profits for that period. So 73,375 is my profit for the second year. My first year was 26,175. So now I've only got to do the working for year three. And to do that, I have to work out the actual profits for year two. Year two is 2010. I say, what were the actual profits for 2010? What was the what were the profits from 1st of January 2010 to 31st of December? If they were less than what was assessed, I'll get relief. So say it works out at 70,000. I'll have been over assessed, or this person will have been over assessed, Jack Stabler by 3375. That will get taken away here in year three. So the working you do is to work out the actual profits. So for this relief working, I have to work out what the actual profits were for 2010. And whatever I get, I'm going to compare them to what we assess, the assessable profits, which we worked out already. Come back here. 2010 runs from January 2010 to December. So of this accounting period, it goes two months, January and February, two months of this are in 2010. All of this is in 2010, and it's a six-month period, so two and six is eight. And four months of this guy here must, well, is in 2010. It starts in September, October, November, December. So I want four months out of this, I want all of this, and two months of that. So you just do the working. So in the period of February, we made profit of 34,900. It's an eighth, eight month period. And I just want two months, so two eighths of 34,900. And that works out as 8725. The next period is March to August. And all of this is in 2010. We want the full six months, so we don't have anything to do for this. So we just take the total of that. For if you wanted to apply fraction, we take six over 6, 6, 6, which is ending as 100%. So we take the total, 47,200. And then the last accounting period of this one, four months of this are in 2010. It's for a year, it's for a 12-month period, so it's four twelfths. And we get the total of that, and that's our actual profits which are 72,158. And that adds up to 72,158. What we do is compare this to what we were assessed at. So 72,158 versus 73,375 when we went back 12 months from August. So that versus 73,375. And the difference is 1,217. So we were over-assessed. The actual was only 72. We were assessed on 73. We were over-assessed by 1,217. When you're over-assessed, the relief in, if you're over-assessed in year two, you get relief in year three. So the 1,217 gets taken away here. So the new figure, well the, not the new one, the figure 
for year 3 is 47483.